I wasted so much time in college coding the wrong way. No one told me what actually matters. I was just guessing. I followed trends, random advice, and did what everyone else was doing. And guess what? By the time I graduated, I realized I had made some really dumb mistakes. Mistakes that cost me job offers, confidence, and time I can never get back. So in this video, I want to be that elder brother for you. I'll share the five dumbest things I did as a programmer in college, and more importantly, what I would do if I could go back and fix them. If you are a student right now, this video might just save you months or even years of confusion. Let's start. The first mistake I made was I focused too much on coding and ignored everything else. I know that sounds weird coming from a programmer, but hear me out. In my first and second year, I thought the secret to success was simple: just code more. So I did. I spent nights solving problems, learning syntax, building small projects. That's not a bad thing. But the problem was I made coding my entire world. I did not join clubs. I did not meet people from other branches. I skipped tech meetups, thinking they were boring. I even avoided group assignments because I thought solo coding was better. What I did not realize is that skills alone won't take you far. Your network matters just as much. I had no seniors to guide me, no friends doing internships, no one to tell me, "Hey, this is the path you should follow." Because of that. I missed out on early opportunities like hackathons, referral chances, and even internships. I was coding hard, but I was running behind. Now, what I would do instead? I would still code, of course, but I would also talk to people. I would make friends in higher semesters. I would ask for advice. I would attend one tech event every six months just to meet new people. Because trust me, one conversation can change your path more than hundred hours of solo coding. My second mistake was I waited too long to start data structures and algorithms. This one hurts the most. For almost two years, I avoided DSA. I found it boring, confusing, and honestly too hard. I told myself I'll start next semester, but that next semester never came. Instead, I kept making websites. Small apps and playing around with different technologies, React, Node, Firebase, and so on. I thought if I build cool stuff, I'll get a job. The truth was, I wasn't ready for coding interviews. When I finally opened Lead Code in my third year, it hit me hard. I could not solve even the easy problems. My logic was weak. I knew how to build, but not how to think like a programmer. Now, what I would do instead? I would start DSA early and slow. Just three, four problems a week from first year itself. Focus on the basics: arrays, strings, recursion. Don't wait for placements to panic learn everything. DSA is like a gym; you need consistency, not a sprints. Now, my third mistake was I did tutorials for everything, but never built anything real. Yes, the YouTube tutorial trap. This one is very common. I watched hours of videos on how to build to-do apps, e-commerce websites, weather apps. I followed every step line by line. At the end, I felt like a genius. But when I tried to build something on my own, I was completely stuck. What I did not understand was watching tutorials is not the same as learning. You only grow when you struggle to solve things yourself. Tutorials are like training wheels. They help you start, but you cannot ride forever with them on. What now? What I would do instead? So after watching one tutorial, I would build a small variation of the project without looking at the code again. For example, if I watched a weather app tutorial, I would try making a COVID tracker. Same tech. New idea. It is painful at first, but that pain—that's the real learning. Now, my fourth dumbest mistake was I ignored soft skills and communication. I thought coding was everything. If I could write good code, companies would line up for me. But I was wrong, very wrong. During my first group project in college, I realized I had no idea how to explain my code. I was scared to speak during presentations. I avoided team meetings. And during interviews, even when I knew the answer, I fumbled. I could not express it clearly. That's when I realized communication is a skill, not a personality trait. And like any skill, you get better at it only when you practice. No one teaches you this in class. No one says, "Hey, practice how to talk about your code." But it's one of the most important things companies look for. You can be great at solving problems, but if you can't explain your logic or ask the right questions, you will get left behind. Now, what I would do instead? 
I would force myself to speak even in small ways. I would explain my project to a friend. I would try answering questions in coding clubs. I would record myself explaining how my code works just to practice. And most importantly, I would focus on English speaking, not fancy English, just clear and simple, especially for those of us from South Asia. This one skill alone can change your confidence level in interviews, internships and the workplace. Now, last but not the least, Mistake was, I kept chasing new languages and trends instead of mastering the basics. In college, every few months, I would jump to something new. Python, then JavaScript, then a bit of C++. Oh, someone's doing Kotlin. Let's try that. I was addicted to starting things. But guess what? I finished nothing. I had surface level knowledge of everything and deep understanding of nothing. I did not know how memory works. I did not understand how a browser renders a page. I could not debug a simple C++ program without googling for 30 minutes. I was a jack of all trades, master of none. And that made me feel lost. What? I would do instead, I would pick one language and go deep. It does not matter if it's C++, Java or Python. Stick to it, learn how to write clean code in it, understand how memory loops, conditions and functions work at a deeper level. And instead of changing every new tool, I would focus on building with what I already know. Because in the end, companies don't care how many tools you have heard of, they care whether you can think, debug and solve problems in any tool. College is your playground. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need to master everything. But please, don't waste these years the way I did. Looking back, I realized I was not dumb. I was just unaware. I did not have the right guidance. I thought being busy meant I was making progress. But I was running in circles. If you are in college right now, you still have time. Time to fix your direction. Time to build the right habits. Time to become the programmer you actually want to be. So here is what I want you to do. Choose one of these mistakes that hit you the hardest. Fix it this week, not next month, this week. And if you found this video helpful, share it with one friend who is also coding in college. Let's help each other grow. That's how we win. That's it for the video. We'll see you in the next one.